Now, I feel like many of us can identify with that. Oh, yeah. I feel yeah. like many you of us got some All people right. on the left and oh, the right yeah. side, right? Some neighbors, some bosses, some, oh. some people we know mm -hmm. who we probably right. think right. are going to hell. Uh -huh. Know that they said, forget God. I don't want nothing to do with him. Mm -hmm. I'm going to follow me. And we said, uh, <laughs> you have that. I'm going to have it. All right. See, the pastor told us, learn about Jesus, tell others. All right. We know that the scripture says, go forth and tell the world right. all the things that God has done. Right. But so many times we see somebody who we know is lost, mm -hmm. who we know is living a oh, life, uh -huh. a and we turn around oh, and know. we high tell it the other way. Oh, know. oh, they don't know me. Oh, they wouldn't want to hear what I got to say. Right, right. Oh, they're going to talk about me. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure these are all the same things Jonah said. Because oh, yeah. see, Jonah said, if I go over here and I tell these people, get right, they're going to kill me. Right. Mm -hmm. If I tell these people, God's coming to destroy you, there's no way they're going to mm -hmm. repent. They're going to mm -hmm. laugh at me. They're going to make fun of me. All the same things we mm -hmm. tell ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so Jonah hopped on a ship and went across the sea, doing his very best to get far, far away from mm -hmm. where God is. Mm -hmm. And God sent a storm. Okay. Okay. All of a sudden, life got hard for Jonah. Uh -oh. uh -oh. All of a sudden, Jonah's uh -oh. disobedience yeah. called yeah. over there. Oh, and the okay. boat, Bible says that the boat was about to sink. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But where was Jonah? Mm -hmm. Jonah was in the boat sleep. Yeah. 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 Jonah was in the boat sleep. He's like, I'm good. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I'm going to sleep. And they wake him up and they say, hey, man, we about to die. Uh -huh. Hey, man, this ship is about to sink. Right. Right. What's right. going on? How are you even sleep right, right. now? Right. Right. So the people decided to cast lots. Now, that was an old school way of gambling. It was an old school way of fortune telling. They were going to figure out who was the reason for this. The lots fell on Jonah. Right. right. And the Bible says that Jonah was like, yeah, guys, it's me. Mm -hmm. If you throw me overboard, the storm will cease. Right. Now these men were fishermen. They were like, no, no, that's wrong. That's the wrong mm -hmm. thing to do. But the storm got worse, mm -hmm. and the storm got worse. And, they and got finally scared. they had no choice. <laughs> they tossed Jonah right. over. Right. And instantly, the storm ceased. Right. And the Bible says that a great fish mm -hmm. swallowed Jonah whole. Oh, right. yeah. And so that's kind of where we find ourselves. Let's read together Jonah chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 1 through 10. On the count of three, let us read 1, 2, 3. Then, then Jonah, Jonah prayed, prayed unto the, the Lord his God, God out of the of belly. And, and he said, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction, and he answered me. Out of the belly of soul I cried, and you heard my voice. For you but cast me into the deep, into the heart of the sea, and the flood surrounded me. All your battles and your waves passed over me. Then I said, I have been cast out of your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The water surround me, even to my soul. The deep closed around me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the mooring of the mountain. The earth with its back closed behind me forever. Yet you have brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayers went up to you into your holy temple. Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pray what I have vowed, salvation of the Lord. So the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited John on to dry land. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Listen, I want to talk to you today about Jonah's prayer. And I want to talk to you today about Jonah's prayer because I think that so many of us find ourselves in situations as a result of disobedience. Okay. And we don't know how really to get out of it. Mm -hmm. See, we talk about all these other prayers. We talk about the Lord's prayer. Mm -hmm. we, talk about, we talk about prayers that daily. We talk about, Lord, bless my everything. Mm -hmm. We pray all these prayers, but sometimes we fail to pray how 
to get out of where we find ourselves. Oh, yeah. Okay. See, like I suggested, each and every one of us oftentimes makes the same mistake that Jonah did. Mm. Oh, yeah. We hear the word of the Lord say, go forth and do something. Mm -hmm. We turn our back on that word because it's uncomfortable, yeah. it's hard, mm -hmm. it's okay. challenging, right. it's not something that I'm willing to do. Exactly. Exactly. And then our life becomes a storm. It becomes a rolling, frothing, mm -hmm. uh, tumultuous mm -hmm. storm. Life where everything wrong. seems to go wrong. Mm -hmm. And we seem to find ourselves wondering why it won't get right. Why right. We seem to find That's ourselves uh, encompassed in this idea that no matter what we do, we can't get right. Thank my Lord. And well, you can't get right. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, until you get right with God, Come on, oh, heaven. Heaven. Oh, heaven. your situation is not going to get any yeah. mm -hmm. Until you change and admit that you need help from God. Mm -hmm. All right. You can literally oh, yeah. walk away from what he called you to do. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get admit it. Right. right. And so we find ourselves here today looking at a passage with a man who found himself in that situation. Mm, that's what I love about the word of God is that it speaks to every situation oh, that we have. Right. Right. All right. So, oh, yeah. See, the challenge is out there for each and every one of us. We're supposed to be alike. Amen. Amen. God, that was the word sent to the body of Christ mm -hmm. for this church this year going forward. Yes. Be alike. Yes. Be alike. Yes. Be alike. Yes. Be alike. Yes. That's right. But so many times we mm. allow situations Come on, and circumstances huh? to diminish our life. That's right. So That's many right. times we find a way to say, oh, let me close it. It might shine too bright. Oh, 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 oh let me just burn it. I don't want to hurt anybody's eyes. Mm. Mm. Oh, let me uh, anything <laughs> and everything. Mm. Mm. And so we find ourselves in the belly of a great fish. Mm. Mm. Note at the end of chapter 1, verse 17, the Bible says, the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow Jonah. Mm -hmm. The Lord appointed mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. great fish. Mm -hmm. Come on, See, this that. experience was appointed by God. Right. Yes. It wasn't by accident yes. that this happened. Mm -hmm. And I think this just has, has full-on relationship to what we see in the world today, mm -hmm. what we see in our circumstances, mm -hmm. and what we see in our situations. See, there are things going on in the world that we would call accident, mm -hmm. that we don't like. Mm -hmm. right? But the Bible says that the Lord appointed mm -hmm. Come on, the great fish. So the situation and the circumstance that's occurring in your life right now is not by accident. The Lord has appointed that for a reason and a purpose. We're going to look and see some of that purpose soon. So here we go in, in chapter 2, verse 1. The Bible says, Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the stomach of the fish. I highlighted in my Bible then. Mm -hmm. Highlighted in my Bible then because I think That's right. so relevant to yeah. how that transition occurred. Mm -hmm. Jonah here hears from God, right. mm -hmm. chooses to run away. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jonah hear what God has said do and said no. Note if you go back to chapter one, um, it says in verse one, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry out for me, for their wickedness has come up. Mm -hmm. But chapter verse three says, But Jonah rose up to flee. <laughs> he didn't have a conversation with God. He didn't follow up with him and say, Lord, are you sure? Is this what you want from me? Did I mishear what you were saying? God, let's talk about this. What are you looking at? Let me see your perspective. Open the heart. Open my eyes. Open my ears. None of that stuff. He heard, he heard God say something, and he turned around and went the other way. But then here in chapter 2, when he's in the belly of the well, when he's in the belly of the fish, when he's finding his whole situation that's covered him up, and he has nowhere to go. Man, he can uh, yes. Then Jonah has something yes. to say. Yes. Yes. Then you want to have a conversation with him. Mm -hmm. How many of us is like that? Oh, yeah. How many of us try to do it our own way? We'll talk to everybody else. Lord, you won't believe. Girl, you won't believe what happened. Yes. Brother, man, let me tell you what happened. Yes. Somebody need to give me some advice about this situation. Right. But turn to God and ask for him to say. Huh. My, my, my. That's real. We tend to hesitate. We tend to talk to everybody else. Yes. We'll look yes. up our we'll horoscope. We'll go online to our blogs. Yes. Yes. We'll check the Twitter feeds for who we follow. That's right. That's right. We'll seek advice from everybody else. All right. Mm. But once we're stuck, mm. once our situation mm. becomes untenable, and I'll be once I can't get in contact yeah. with such and All such, right. it's too late at night and everybody else is sleeping. Mm. I'm the only one awake. Jonah prays mm -hmm. to the Lord yeah. his God yeah. on the stomach of the fish. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
I called out of my distress to the mm. Lord, mm. and he answered. Oh, mm. I cried for help from the depth of Sheol, mm. and you heard my voice. Mm -hmm. Now, I think it's just so interesting. Jonah, 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 it's funny. As I was looking at this, I thought to myself, man, Jonah, Jonah quoted a whole bunch of other stuff from the Bible. <laughs> it's like Jonah must have heard the word a time or two or something. Okay. Okay. And as I was thinking about this, I, I thought about Psalms 139, verse 8. David says, if I ascend to heaven, yeah, you are yeah, there. Mm -hmm. If I make my bed in Sheol, yeah, oh, there. you are there. He goes on to say, no matter where I go, yeah. I can't get away from you. Right. Here comes Jonah in the belly of the well, right. as deep as he can possibly be, right. in a situation that seems to make no sense to a reasonable mind. He says, I cried for help from the depth of Sheol, yeah. you heard. Mm -hmm. yes. You heard my mm -hmm. voice. So understand that we serve a God who no matter what the situation is allowed to come yeah. into our life, he still hears our voice. Yeah. We serve a God who's only waiting for you to call on him. Yeah. We serve a God who's only waiting for you to raise your come, hand and say, on, wait, Lord, God. hear me. Yeah. He stands by waiting for the yeah. opportunity to show yeah. himself faithful yeah. on your behalf. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Jonah says in verse 3, mm. you had cast me into the deep, mm. into the heart of the seas. Uh -oh. The current engulfed me. All your breakers and billows passed over me. I don't know about you all, but like for me, one of my greatest fears would be drowning. Mm -hmm. Like that's just one of those things I don't ever want to experience. Mm -hmm. I don't want to experience drowning in any way, form, or fashion. I don't, I, I see myself like falling into the water. I imagine if I was on the Titanic or a big ship, and, oh you know, goodness. the water's covering my head. Like I'm holding my breath, <laughs> holding it, holding it. And as I go lower and lower, like trying to swim up, not making it at all, seeing all, it's just water and water and the crew. This is why I can go on submarines. <laughs> you know, I, I only do cruise ships. I, I know all the exits and everything. I made sure I learned how to swim. I'm, I'm making it. And this idea that there's this much water over me. The currents covered me. He said, you cast me into the deep. So much so that in verse 4 he says, so I said to myself, I have been expelled from your sights. My, my, my. Mm. Nevertheless, mm. nevertheless, mm. I will look again mm. towards your holy temple. Yeah. Nevertheless, yeah. nevertheless, see some of your circumstances and situations got you feeling like you're underwater. Mm -hmm. Some of your circumstances yeah. and the Come things on, that you're struggling you with got thing. you feeling like you can't make it. Yeah. See, some of us never learn how to swim, and so swimming is like yeah. something, no, definitely never going to happen. Mm -hmm. But our circumstances and our situations mm -hmm. got us feeling like we're underwater, like we're drowning, like we yeah. can't make it. Yeah. Yeah. That's your right. fear is, is burning alive. And so some of your situations, it feels like you've got the heat on you. Oh. Like everything and every situation that you do is like somebody's applying some fire in your direction. Your, bo your boss is on your nerves. Mm -hmm. Your kids getting on your nerves. Mm -hmm. Your husband or your wife getting on your nerves. Mm -hmm. The job's on your nerves. There's nothing that seems to be working out for you. Every single time you go right, it seems like the devil hits you with a left. Every single time you go left, it seems like the devil hits you with a right. Every single time you start going forward and you make it some progress, it's like you're on an escalator and it just brings you back down. You get seeming into the top and you wonder why. You feel as if the water is encompassing you. You feel, you say, God, I feel like I'm, you can't see me. Surely it's so dark, mm -hmm. there's not a light that can penetrate my situation. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, Jonah says, Never the Never from the, the deep, mm -hmm. I will look at me yes. towards your holy you. yes. mm -hmm. Jonah knew to set his eyes on the Lord. Yes. The Bible says, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills mm -hmm. from yes. which cometh my help. Mm -hmm. My help cometh. Yes. Yes. See, we, we all sing the song, I'm going to put a praise on it. Mm -hmm. right? That's the hit popular song going on right now. But how many of us really put a praise on it? Oh, how yeah. many yeah. of us in the midst of our situation yeah. are right. praise our yeah. way through? How many of us, when things are just not going right, are willing to praise God, are willing to say, Lord, I'm going to lift up my hand, I'm going to lift up my voice. I know that you're in charge no matter what the situation is. All right. Nevertheless, I will look toward Mm -hmm. Verse 5 says, Water encompassed me to the point of death. Mm -hmm. The great deep engulfed me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. I descended to the roots of the mountains. 
the earth with his bars was around me forever. So this, this, he is painting this picture. He's painting this picture that's just so dramatic. Listen, he says, water encompassed me to the point of death. Like I was completely covered. Okay. I was completely surrounded. I saw the roots of the mountains. Now oh we know from like earth science <laughs> the trees Lord have roots. God. And the roots go all the way down yeah. into the ground. Right, and the right. stronger the tree, the deeper its roots. Uh, it reaches right. out and branches forth in order to grab a hold of whatever nutrients in order to withstand whatever storm comes its way. Yeah. Now imagine the mountains. Oh, imagine the God. depth God. of the mountains. The mountains is so large that's what you see over the top. The, the, the roots of the mountains must literally go thousands of feet into the earth, into the into the ocean itself. Mm -hmm. He says, I saw the roots. I saw from the oh, bottom up. There was so man. much water that I was underneath the mountain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My situation mm -hmm. had changed. Now, some of us, we are literally in a fish. Mm -hmm. Man, it feels like it. Okay. It feels okay. like the weight of the world yeah. is pressing down yeah. on my situation. Mm -hmm. When you're in a ship, it says the further you go down, the pressure becomes so great yeah. as to crush you. It's constantly pressing against you. My Lord. The pressure My Lord. of life sometimes yeah. seems like it's squeezing and mm -hmm. squeezing mm -hmm. and squeezing. Mm -hmm. And you don't know. Every breath, like an anaconda, like a snake, every breath that you take, every exhale, it squeezes you a little tighter and tighter and tighter. Mm -hmm. And you feel so overwhelmed. Your parents never seem to get off your back. Your friends don't like you at school. The teachers make it hard to get good my grades. Lord, my yes, Lord, yes, my Lord. Yes. It feels like you're, you're losing. You're losing over and over again. Mm. It feels like you. But in the verse 6 says, you have brought me up. You have brought up my life from the pits. Oh, oh Lord, Lord, my God. See, no matter how bad the circumstance and no matter how bad the situation, mm -hmm. all it takes is a confession on your part. All right. Right. Oh, what 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 all it takes is a confession on your yeah. part. Yeah. Of what it is. He, his situation didn't change. Mm -hmm. In the midst of that confession, it wasn't like he immediately was set free. That's he right. said, I'm going to speak that which is not yeah. as though no, it were. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. exercise my faith. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that's what we as a people today do. Mm -mm -mm. I think in order for us today as the people of God to be successful, yeah. in order for us to change the world, we're going to have to be willing to let our light shine. Oh, we're going to have to be willing yeah. to let our light shine in darkness. We're going to have to be willing to let our shine. Listen, if, if I turned out all the lights in this house, mm -mm -mm. and we shut all the doors, and we sat in the dark for 20 minutes, your eyes would get used to seeing them. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. You get a little bit more comfortable. The first few minutes, if I said jump up and run around, everybody would be like, no, I mm hate -hmm. each other. But after about 20 minutes, you'll be able to see a little better. That's right. After about two hours and about two days of just sitting in the darkness and getting used to it, you begin to move around oh, yeah. you become comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. The light would become something that you didn't want anything to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It would hurt your eyes. That's it right. would bother you. You'd be like, no, shut oh, the doors. The right. the darkness. That's right. That's right. So many people in the world are like that today. They're like, no, no light, no light. Mm -hmm. But God has called upon us to shine light. That's right. That's right. No, it ain't that serious. Yeah. No, I don't need you to shine that much light. No, close the door. They're going to say whatever they need to say. First, they're going to be like, why are you doing that? They're going to sound like they're on your side. And then they're going to be like, stop doing that because now they're your enemy because you're bringing light into their darkness. You're going to shine on them what they don't want anybody to see. But God is saying, that's what I called you to do. And it starts with us speaking it in our own. Yes. So even when the world seems like it's pressing against you, even when it seems like God is pressed, allowing the situation, when the situation seems like it's getting so hard, you got to speak life anyways. Mm -hmm. Note here in verse 7, he says, while I was fainting away, I remembered the Lord. Isaiah 40, 31. Anybody know that offhand? Isaiah 40, 31 tells us that yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. Mm -hmm. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. So yet here he says, I was fainting away. I was getting tired. I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came to you into your holy temple. Those who regard vain idols forsake their faithfulness, but I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, the woman of God brought the word from Philippians 4, 6 that said, with prayer, supplication, mm -hmm. and thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Be oh, anxious yeah. for nothing. Yeah. So yeah. many times when we pray, we find ourselves anxious. Yeah. So many yeah. times when we pray, we're just making a laundry list yeah. of the things we want God to do. Yeah. Rarely do we find ourselves thankful for the situation mm. we're going through. Oh, well, rarely do we find ourselves. See, Jonah didn't think that this was a good thing when it started. Come on, the God. idea of going to, to Tarshish, and to, or sorry, to Nineveh yeah. and telling them what was wrong and fixing themselves didn't seem like a good thing. Right. That was only helpful to them, he right. saw. Right. He right. saw no way that he would grow from. Right. And so many times we don't see any way that we're going to grow from. Jesus. We just simply think God sending us over there so we can be a martyr, so we can sacrifice again and again and again. But we don't see the positive things that would come from it. And Jonah didn't see it either. He was like, oh, right. thank you, way, God, I'm in this, this, the belly of this fish, this situation ain't where it's supposed to be, and you just want me to go tell these people so they can get saved. But there was something in it for Jonah. He <laughs> says, I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. That which I have vowed I will pay. Salvation is from mm -hmm. See, God wanted to show Jonah something about who he was. Yes. And so many times when God asks us to do stuff, it's not just random. It's never just, hey, go do this because it's going to make me look good. Mm -hmm. Go do this because I just want to see you struggle. Right, go right. do this because no, I just no, want to see you pray. No, God mm -hmm. is trying to reveal a little bit more of who he is. Mm -hmm. Now, Pastor, where would you get that idea from? Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you asked. Turn with me, if you will, <laughs> real quick over to Job. Turn with me, if you will, to Job chapter 42. Mm -hmm. Come on, sir. Now, if you know the story of Job, you know this was a man who did everything Right. The Bible says that there was none like Job. Right. And because of Job's faithfulness to God, God blessed him. Mm -hmm. But we know Job's story and that Job lost everything that he had. Mm -hmm. He lost his family. Yeah. He lost his land. Right. He lost everything that he owned, his savings, his investments. Every single thing that Job had was lost, and then he lost his health. Yeah. And then he got beat up. So Job is sitting there in sackcloth and ashes, covered from head to toe with boils and unsmelling, uh, just disgusting. Yeah. Job was just disgusting. Yeah. He went from being one of the greatest in the world to literally just sitting there disgusting. Right. His wife didn't want anything That's to do with right. him. She said, baby, you just might as well curse God and die. His friends all came to him and said, hey, bro, clearly you did something wrong. Oh, you need to just go ahead and repent about it. Mm -hmm. Job was like, man, I don't know what I did, but I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Job chapter 42, mm -hmm. the last six, or the first six verses, then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you do all things, mm -hmm. and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have declared that which I did not understand, mm -hmm. things too wonderful for me which I did not know. Mm -hmm. Hear now and I will speak. I will ask you and you instruct me. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you. Therefore I retract and I repent in dust and ashes. And verse 5 is the key. I've heard about you by the hearing of the ear, mm -hmm. but now my eyes see you. See, Job had heard about God. And right. Job knew he had to sacrifice right. God. And he knew he had to try to walk upright and holy before mm -hmm. God. And he knew that his kids might mess up, so he had to sacrifice on their behalf. Right. Job didn't know God the way he knew God mm -hmm. right? after he went through what he went through. That's right. That's right. right. Job had to come to a deeper right. knowledge of who God yeah. was through the things that Job went yeah. through. When Job found himself in the same place, he said, I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. And back in, in chapter 2, verse 9, mm -hmm. that which I have vowed I will pay, salvation is from the Lord. Yeah, Salvation yeah. is from the Lord. Yeah, that was yeah. Jonah's way of saying, God, I believe. Mm. God, there's nothing I'm not willing to do on your behalf. Yeah. Lord, there's no place that I'm not willing to go if you tell me to. So, yeah. so, so Job had to come to that, oh, sorry, not Job, but Jonah had to yeah, come to that place, place. Yeah. of knowledge. Well, the same thing occurs for each and every one of us. If God said to you, you need to go out and tell somebody. Here, you need to go talk to your neighbor. Here, you need to go be a friend. Yes. Here, they're yes. hungry. Yes. Yes. How many times yes. do we walk past somebody on the street and we say, no, nah, bro, I ain't giving you no money. We justify it however we want to, right? Uh -huh. Oh, they'd have made better decisions. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're probably going to spend it on alcohol and drugs. Uh -huh. Oh, they're probably going right, to spend right, it on right, crack right, or some right, other thing right. like that. But at the end of the day, we're called to give to people who don't have. Yeah. Right? That's a part of being a Christian. But we turn and we say, no, 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 not me. Mm -hmm. Just like Jonah did. Mm -hmm. God said, go to Nineveh. Mm -hmm. and he said, nope, 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 nope. Not me. Mm -hmm. God says, love your neighbors. And we say, 
Let me find one that's a little more love. Let me find one that's in my circle of friends. Yeah. See, I might Facebook friend you because other people who I know are your friends on Facebook. Mm -hmm. But if you're just some random person who tries Facebook friend me, no, nah, I think you're like a spam or a terrorist or somebody just trying to hack my account. That's how it is, right? Mm -hmm. Who am I going to follow on Twitter? I'm going to follow people who I already know yes, or right. who are friends with somebody who I know. Yes, right. right? I have my own little circle. I have my own little yeah. network. Mm -hmm. Where then will I reach outside of that? But as a Christian, mm -hmm. one who is supposed to shine their light, Come on, sir. where am I supposed to go? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, right. Where God leads me. Mm -hmm. and so, so many times we find ourselves like Jonah, mm -hmm. turning away. And then we go into a place where there's a storm. Then our own travels lead us to a circumstance and a situation. And then God has to come in and intervene. Oh. But he isn't just going to pull us out of We have to go through some things. Oh, yeah. We find ourselves like Jonah in the belly of a fish. But we don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. We don't know how to get ourselves out. Mm -hmm. We still fighting some of us. Oh, so when we finally mm -hmm. stop fighting, we're just like, okay, Lord. Okay. Whatever you say, God. I'm just going to go with it. My sure, you want me to go there? All right, let's just go. And then if you show up at Nineveh and we're like, go ahead and fix yourself because uh, God's going to come get you. <laughs> and we're going to do exactly the same thing that Jonah did. And listen, when you read the rest of the, of the, of the story, Jonah goes to Nineveh, the fish is going to kick him out. He shows up at Nineveh, he says, hey, repent. He's really hoping inside that they don't. Right. 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 And you can tell it in the way that the scripture says, and y'all repent. God's going to come get you. Repent right now. And then they do. They're like, oh, God, no. And he's just mad. He goes, goes Bob says he sits up on the hill, and he hopes that God will just right. throw some lightning and thunder down from heaven. He's just like, get him, God. Get him. And he's hot, and God calls us a plant. Right. And Jonah's like, yeah, I got some shade. I got a good thing. Mm -hmm. And then there's a little worm, and it comes in and bites the plant, mm -hmm. and the plant withers away. And Jonah's like, Arr! oh, nothing go right. right I was right. in the belly of a well. The, the city didn't get destroyed. My right. plant got aged. Right, right. He's so angry. Mm -hmm. He still had it really right. burned. Right. Now, how many of us are like that? Yeah. You pray, God, get me out of the situation. I'm going to do what you tell yeah. me to. I go over there. Yeah. God loves you, and he wants you to go to heaven. So get saved. Do we just walk away? Right. That's what we tell our next time. a witness. And we wonder why our secret situations and our circumstances don't change. Oh, we hammer. wonder why Christians aren't seen with the positive light. We wonder why things don't go well. Because our boss is asking us to do something. We're like, Lord, I don't want to do it. And we do it begrudgingly, but right. we still are just doing mm -hmm. it begrudgingly. Mm -hmm. Listen, he says, salvation is from the Lord. Then the Lord commanded the fish and vomited Jonah up on the dry land. My God, my. God is complete intent and purpose with Jonah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell him a little bit about who he is. Oh, yeah. yeah. This yeah. Jonah yeah. arrive at a deeper place of knowledge for who he is. Yeah. Listen, how many years have you been on this life? Mm -hmm. How much deeper is your knowledge of who God is? Mm -hmm. How many situations come on, come and circumstances on, did you go on, through without yeah. coming to a deeper knowledge and yeah. revelation of who God was? Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be in the same place that we were 30 and 40 you years ago. Right. All right. <laughs> know how to call on God. We should know how to trust him when our yeah. situation and circumstances. This, this is my testimony. So it's Friday. Friday morning. It's Veterans Day. I'm, I, I should be off normally. When I was in the regular army, I would have been off on Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. Enjoy my four-day weekend. I'd have been going to get me myself some, some free food. Who are going veterans? <laughs> <laughs> Here it is on Friday. It's prayer and fasting day. I've been invited to come speak to two different events. I got to get dressed in my full-on class days, which is, eh, some days that's a good thing, some days it's not. <laughs> I get up early in the morning, I go to the first event, it goes well, I talk to some little kids. They're all little kids, none of them will join the Army anytime soon, but hey, maybe they'll be great people one day. <laughs> all right, I'm excited, I'm pumped, I come back home, I hang out with my wife and my daughter. It's a good time. Now, my wife's getting ready to leave, she's going to noonday, I'm getting ready to leave to go to my second event. When I get ready to leave, I place my phone on top of my wife's car. I lock my kids car seat in, I go over there, and I kiss my wife, I get in my car, I go back inside the house, my wife pulls off, I realize I don't have my phone. Mm. I don't know where my phone is. I call my wife, I say, hey, my phone might be on top of your roof. It's not. I'm upset. <laughs> Mildly putting it, I'm upset. I can't find my phone anywhere. The end of the day comes, I can't find my phone. On Saturday morning, I get up and I put the, another phone on top of my wife's car. I say, drive over to the same place she did. Drive the same way. The same phone came also. She drives where she went. She comes back. Guess what? Her phone's still up there. My phone's gone. I'm getting upset. 
I don't have my phone. My phone is my right hand. It's an extension of who I am. Everything I can do on my phone, I can do it with my eyes closed. I can check my email, I can check my bank account, I can check my Facebook, I can check my LinkedIn. I can send emails, I can send pictures. I've got thousands of hours of video of my children playing around. I'm not happy about the fact that I've lost any and all of these things. I miss my phone. It's day three, I wake up and I say, God, where's my phone? Where's my phone? Where's my phone? I'm missing text messages. I'm missing phone calls. I'm missing my phone. Now, this may not seem like a big deal. Some of you all grew up in a time of not having a phone extension wasn't that crazy thing. But if you grew up, if you're 30 and below, you know how important it is to have your smartphone. The smartphone just makes you feel better about yourself. It makes me feel technologically sad. It makes me feel comfortable. I can send a tweet. I can send a Facebook page. I can watch the, video, the game on TV. I can see everything that's going on. I don't even mess with my tablet anymore. My son plays with me. I had to go get my tablet. This is so out of date. I'm over there two hours trying to update my tablet. I'm so angry. I'm like, Lord, where is my phone? And then it occurs to me. I say, God, I've been doing this for too long. Clearly, if my phone is missing, it's missing for me. Clearly, if this phone stayed on while we drove and came back, but my phone is gone, <laughs> clearly got to be for a reason. I said, Lord, let me change my prayer. I said, God, explain to me why my phone is gone. Show me what it is that I needed to go in order to get to where you need to be. Teach me how to learn something more about who you were through what just happened. Okay. Listen, so many times we allow the situations and the circumstances of life to come and hit us, Shana. and we just get caught up in a spinning vortex, or we just keep Shana. asking, where is it at? Mm -hmm. What happened? Mm -hmm. Why mm -hmm. is this happening? Why is this occurring? This don't make no sense. I'm getting mad. I'm getting frustrated. I'm turning my back on God. I don't want to hear from heaven. There ain't nothing you can say to me. As long as this is not where it's supposed to be, then something's wrong, and it ain't my fault. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's what we get. But rarely do we turn our prayer to God. What is it you want me to do? What is it that you're trying to teach me? What is it that you're trying to, that I should be hearing? And I begin to hear from God. I just begin to hear him say, you're out of balance. Oh, okay, I'm ready to see. You're out of balance. <laughs> see, I got games on my phone. And my games occupy my time. <laughs> I sit there and I play uh, Cookie Jam. I was 10 levels from, one, from level 1,000. 10 levels are 990. I just be out here, I'm about to get 1,000 this weekend. <laughs> it, begins to, it begins to consume me. So, so free time that I could be used for prayer, free time that I could be used for other things that God's called me to be doing, free time that I could be using to put stuff together. Mm -hmm. So I'm over there playing cookie jam. Mm -hmm. Gotta get my cookie jam. Or I gotta, gotta pop them pandas. <laughs> Making my pan pop off. Or I gotta, gotta go to CBS Sports. I gotta go watch ESPN and get my app in and, and, and watch them. So is my phone coming back? I don't know. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. I'm, I'm calling on Monday morning, and I'm going to get my new phone coming in. But guess what? I'm just not going to put some of those games on there. I recognize that I was out of balance, and that's where I needed to get myself back. Why? Because I believe God's about to do great things in 2016. Oh, okay, amazing. Yeah. But see, I had to learn how to pray that prayer. I had to learn how to get to that place in my life and my experience. And so many of us have been in places where we lost things that were important, where God removes things oh, from yeah. us, where we lost friends, and yeah. where we lost certain circumstances. We even maybe lost jobs. We even maybe lost loved ones, yeah. spouse, or husband, or wife. And we thought to ourselves, God, why did you put me through this? Oh, yeah. And yeah. years yeah. later, we're still lamenting the fact that I lost that. Years later, we're still frustrated with God. Years later, we've not asked for forgiveness or asked him to show us what we can learn from that situation. We're just angry, and we're just bitter, and we're just hurt, oh, and our yeah. lights are shut off, and we're not shining the way God has called us to. Because the circumstances and situations he took you through, he wanted to use. So then we're faced with the choice. The Bible says that after Jonah says salvation is from the Lord, after he reached that knowledge, after he reached that reality, that the Lord commanded the fish and it vomited Jonah up on dry land. Every time you look at your word, every time you look at the stories here, especially in the Old Testament, time and time again, the people had to go through something. It was never just, hey, life's going to be chill because I'm in church. It's always been that you would go through something. Oh, but through that. that struggle, God would use it. 
And so even for the people who are watching this online, even for those who may be seeing this, you know, weeks and months later, it's just the church goes through a struggle as it presses against us, as it seems like we're overwhelmed yes. by changes that may yes. come from Congress, the changes may come from your leadership. Yes. The truth remains, God still wants you to shine. Oh, yes. He's yes. still calling for you oh, to step yes. up. He's yes. still calling you to be a light. Yes. He's still calling you to do good deeds. Yes, yes, yes. amen. But the question is still the same as it was for Jonah. Will you choose to? Oh, how many? See, when the word of the Lord, Lord came, Jonah ran from it. Mm -hmm. Well, today's question is when the word of the Lord has come, what will you do? Oh, how many? Amen. 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 Amen.